That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Black Bear, the fourth film directed by Lawrence Michael Levine, which premiered at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival in the next section, uh, which will be released December 4th, 2020, courtesy of Momentum Pictures. Who directed this? Lawrence Michael Levine. Do I know this person's work? Uh, he's an actor and writer. Uh, I, I don't, you haven't seen any of the previous films he's directed. Um, he's married to Sophia Tikal, um, who's an, a writer, actress herself. This film was dedicated to her. Oh, interesting. Which we'll get into that. I think there's some interesting behind the scenes connections uh, within the, ingrained in this film, if you will. Um, but you have seen a film of Sophia Tikal's. She um, directed the last uh, innovation of Black Christmas. Oh, okay. Amongst other things. This was an interesting film. I would call it like a psychodrama. Yes, I believe that. Yeah. With like a little humor. Broadly a dark comedy, but really this is a psychodrama. Yeah. Okay, the basic story. It's <clears throat> kind of two stories. Mm -hmm. So we start off with Aubrey Plaza playing a character named Allison. Allison sitting on the dock of like a lake or yeah. on a lake. Yeah. In her bathing suit with a towel, she gets up, uh, and then we sort of start a story about a married couple, Gabe and uh, Blair. Blair. So Allison shows up, Aubrey Plaza's character, like in her Uber, to this like remote cabin in the what's the location? The Adirondacks. And Gabe is at the entrance to meet her. And it's a long walk from where she's dropped off to the front of the house. So as they're walking, he's kind of flirting with her, getting to know her. We find out kind of like omitting a lot of information. Well, I mean, like, like the fact that he has seen her movies. And yeah, we learn that she's a, she's a uh, film director. Actor, writer. Mm -hmm. So when Allison and Gabe get to the house, we see Gabe's wife. Whose Blair. Name is Blair standing there. Mm -hmm. And Blair is pregnant. Gabe is visibly annoyed, saying, like, you should be in bed. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was sort of like interacting with Allison as if like He was single. He was single. So Allison is also surprised to see this pregnant woman standing there. It's an awkward exchange. Things get even more awkward very quickly when they're attempting to have dinner. So Gabe and Blair have this house that they're renting out like Airbnb style. Allison has rented um, the space, a space in the cabin to kind of do like a retreat to help her creative juices flow. So the first night she's there, they're having dinner, after dinner drinks, and they get into a very heated conversation about feminism basically. Mm -hmm. And we see that Gabe and Blair, the married couple, are not aligned. <laughs> um, and they get into a fight, which culminates with Blair sort of like accusing her husband of wanting to have sex with this woman, this stranger who's staying in their home. Mm -hmm. They sort of storm off and Gabe does end up having sex with Allison. Mm -hmm. And while he's pump bumping and grinding on her, Blair shows up and strikes Gabe in the head with like a little statue. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like knock him out. So he gets up to try to restrain her and he pushes her. She hurts herself. She's pregnant, she's bleeding. So of course we need to get to her to a hospital. So the three of them jump in their car. Allison, the stranger's driving in the late of night, doesn't know where she's going and hits a black bear. In the middle of the road. In the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. The end. Of that segment. Of that segment, which is the first half of the film, like 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. So the next story, we find Allison on the dock or the pier again, whatever. But now we see that Gabe is like the director of a movie and Allison is playing a character. Mm -hmm. So we see a bunch of film crew. We see that the director, Gabe, is not happy with Allison's performance. We also find out they're the married couple in this story. So he's not happy with her performance. Um, Blair is also in the film, The Blonde. She, so Gabe and Blair are sort of like in cahoots. To, they have this bright idea, Gabe does, that if he convinces his wife that he's like cheating on her with this other actor, <laughs> that that will like uh, sort of uh, produce a better performance out of her. 
and it works in the sense that she thinks that they're like having sex and she's very upset. So Allison ends up getting super drunk off of dark liquor. And, so, they, have, and they have one scene, it's rap day, they have one scene left. It's the final day of shooting, the final scene, they don't have much time, they don't have much money, so they can't go over time. And Allison is too drunk to perform. So there are a lot of little calamitous things that happen, but she is ultimately able to like squeeze out the final scene. And I think Aubrey Plaza as Allison does a very good job on this like emotional scene. And th then the end of that scene is sort of the end of the first part of the film where now Allison, who's married to Gabe, finds Gabe actually having sex with Blair and Allison is outside of like the room they're having sex in, peering through the window when Allison hears a noise behind her and it's a black bear. And then that's, it goes dark. And then the final scene is Allison writing. She go, we revert back to the dock, which is how the film starts as well. And then she goes back um, up to where she's staying and writes on her notepad, black bear. And it's important to note that at each um, new segment, like the first title is the bear in the road. And the second title is uh, the bear by the boathouse. So basically the story is about this person played by Aubrey Plaza who's writing like two stories and we see the two like basically like short films. And until we, we loop back to Black Bear and she breaks the fourth wall and looks at the camera. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. I don't have notes. What would you like to say? I feel like there's a lot to say. I love this movie. I think it's a great uh, kind of discovery. Um, I saw Mike, Lawrence Michael Levine's, Levine's last film, Wild Canaries, in 2014. He also wrote um, Always Shine, starring a girl you love named Mackenzie Davis. Uh, a girl I love? <laughs> being facetious. Who's Mackenzie Davis? Oh, that bland white lady. Anyway, Always Shine. <laughs> uh, I don't love her was directed by Sophie Tikal and it has a very kind of similar setup. It's about two, uh, I believe they're both, both actresses from Los Angeles that take a weekend at Big Sur and go through a series of microaggressions. Um, I don't know, I, I, d this, the discomfort I felt watching the first um, configuration of these characters with Plaza as the uh, director felt very much like an early Polanski film. Uh, and the latter half of it felt like behind the scenes in a Polanski film, as in the manipulations of her as an actress, kind of like what Polanski did with Faye Dunaway in Chinatown. Um, it, I was also reminded of Claude Chabrol's L'Enfer, um, uh, which is all about jealousy. Uh, I don't know, to me this, this segue from Polanski to a Bergman psychodrama, and I, was, I, I loved every minute of it. Um, I think that the... Like, what do you think the film is about? Because the ambiguity is also what I like, because this is a film that's, I think, rich for uh, conversation and dissection. Yeah, we're on a new camera, so we can't talk for too long, because I don't know how long I have, but I think it's... I also think the story's uh, very interesting as a conversation piece, mm -hmm. because I took away that it was about this writer, and, like, because I'm not a creative and I don't write, but my, my impression is that people who do sort of start with an idea, obviously. So we're seeing this particular person who clearly had the idea of three characters, maybe somewhat autobiographical. She had a setting, which is this cabin by a lake, and how that played out. So I think, you know, there's that piece you can talk about, about the creative process, but I think really it's about relationships and manipulation I think as someone who is married, I related to a lot of what was happening. So I think that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like very, uh, I think this is a reference I point to a lot, but who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? <laughs> uh, of course, is uh, the, the, the various configurations of married people in this uh, is what I felt. Uh, I think the black bear uh, is a symbol. I think bear almost could be kind of a homonym, almost like killing of a sacred deer. Um, and each chapter segment is, uh, in the, Blair, the bear, I think it also be nature uh, as, as a symbol of our, our basic functions as beings. Uh, but, but the bear who starts off as being by the road and by the shed and then the last thing she writes is black bear as herself. Uh, I, I don't know, I think there are some interesting uh, components there. So what didn't I really love? I thought the film is what, an hour 40 hours? It's 104 minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. so 100, an hour 44. <clears throat> it feels long because the two pieces are like 50 minutes each. And 
it was getting a little tedious. I also think the second part is much more engaging. The first part, I think it was a deliberate choice to make the interaction between the husband and wife and this third party, the stranger, very awkward, like unbelievably awkward. So I, I think it was deliberate, but it's also, I don't mind sitting in discomfort, but it just, it feels kind of fake. So I kind of wish that it were a little more authentic. Like they're just, it just seems so out of control, but not in a like, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf kind of like funny camp irreverent way. It's just like, yeah, again, <clears throat> like early plants, like knife in the water is this third party introduced to this tension between a couple that's like, it's fraught with hostility. Yeah, I didn't love that. Um, but to me, that felt very having, well, one being married and two, um, being amongst other couples that really are needling each other and when alcohol becomes involved, um, how it can spin very easily out of control. Mm. Aubrey Plaza, I feel like is an actor who everything I see her in, she's the same. Mm -hmm. The same sort of deadpan, same center part with beach waves, just like the, always the same. And that's fine. I don't dislike her. But like the first half of the film, she's serving like what I would expect from her. So my level of engagement was middling until the second part when she really ramps up. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and gives a vi so the final scene of the film that's being shot in the second part of the film is her sort of relaying to her husband like 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 all these emotions about how she needs him and doesn't want him to leave her for this other lady. Right? That's what she's screaming and crying about. It was very well done. It's it's at a level that I think is equivalent to like a general and then a woman under the influence or opening night. Um, I thought she was fantastic. So when I consider the fact that like the film feels kind of long to me and then I, the, the payoff is really not until that final scene in the end, it just felt a little long in the tooth. <clears throat> I didn't mind that at all. Uh, but, sure. But again, <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm interested in a film, I, you know, it's the, the length matters not, uh, I, I suppose. Um, Levine is of course married to Sophia Tikal, um, who, as I mentioned, it's dedicated to, and I remember, um, I remember if it's first or second film, she, she directed a movie called Green back in 2011. Green with Jealousy is the theme. And I remember reading an interview with her um, stating that through this film she was kind of acting out her own um, issues in her relationship. And, and it, to me I felt that that very much probably holds true for the um, <clears throat> inspiration for Black Bear. Um, because if you, it also boils down to these two different segments that are about the hostilities of a tenuous couple that uh, are kind of ruined by a project. One is a pregnancy and the second one is a film. Because as we learn in the, the Christopher Abbott is screaming at uh, Aubrey Plaza uh, in the second half about how you insisted on being the lead in this film, how do you like it? <laughs> um, I, I, like, I thought Christopher Abbott was excellent. I think Sarah Gadon, um, Canadian actress who's worked with Cronenberg and Villeneuve and Xavier Dolan. Uh, I think she shines better as the jealous wife Blair in the first half because I didn't think she had as much to do in the second half. I also really liked, um, there, it, there is a sort of broad comedy in the uh, second portion with all the film crew um, issues going on. Uh, Lindsay Burge uh, plays the makeup girl and there's a, uh, the wardrobe is this gay guy and they have their separate thing going on with the script girl who's baked out of her mind. Just They're smoking weed. One of the girl, one of the film crew members gets diarrhea. I think the AD, yeah. That was a, a, amusing. What would you give this film? Um, is there anything else I want to... Really... Well, we don't have a lot of time, so let's... <laughs> Is rushing me. Um, <clears throat> I would give. Oh, and I, also, the, the, there's a different style. The cinematographer was uh, Robert Leitzel. Uh, there, there's a distinct uh, change in the visual tone of the film as well, because the first segment is kind of static. We're really, we really are honing in on this this hostile dialogue, and the second bit is a little more frenetic with the handheld camera, uh, which I really liked and thought fit the tone. Um, I would give this film four out of five. I would give it three and a half out of five. Anything else? No, that's it. All right, bye. Bye.